Hey, Richard Lewis here. This is like take number 37. I don't know, it's taken me forever to try and do this video for you, but I'm going to talk a little bit about the jockey wheel today. And uh, so just a couple of points on this. The front end of a, t of a tab trailer is uh, generally an Alco chassis if it's before 2000, it's 2010 or before. And uh, there will be a few 2010 models that did not have an Alco chassis. Uh, at the very end of production, they were using whatever chassis they had available. But most are going to be Alcos, and so they're going to look a lot like this with this plastic front guard that has your brake handle on it. And then the jack, uh, the jockey wheel jack assembly goes down through that, uh, that uh, gray plastic uh, shroud. So just a, a few different points on this to show you. First off, one of the things that I've purchased is I have the optional uh, handle which comes from Busy Outdoors in the UK. You can order that as an option. It gives you a nice strong spot to be able to grab onto the trailer to move it around. Right now I've got my jockey wheel raised up and you're wondering how that's possible. It's sitting on a jack stand that has a ball, a two inch ball installed on it. So I've got the, the uh, weight off this so I can kind of show you a couple things. First off, um, these threads that are in here, it's very important to have uh, some anti-seize on the threads that go into your trailer. So here's a used up tube of it. This is Permatex anti-seize. You can buy that on any auto parts store. This stuff is the slipperiest stuff known to man. You put that on the threads, it reduces the chance of these threads stripping out. It also reduces the chance of the threads binding and giving you the idea that you have this tight when you really don't have it tight. Uh, also, as, as some other people on uh, the Facebook group have uh, said, it's important to be sure that your, uh, your uh, post is coming straight up. If it's coming out at an angle, when it's under load or not, then it's possible the wedge has slipped out of its position. You'll want to wiggle it to be sure that that wedge is down in there, because if you don't, the thing can release and fall down, let the front of the trailer fall down. So, uh, a couple things. One of the things you want to try and prevent is you want to try and prevent this from falling down and slamming into the ground while your car is going 60 miles an hour like that. Because if it does that, it will tear the bottom off this wheel before you ever can get the car stopped. So that's, that's one thing that you want to prevent against, and I can show you what I've done to do it. Having this handle enables me to, to, to fix it in a way so that I can pull this all the way up, lock that down as I would normally, and then I can put a piece of PVC on here, and that prevents this, so there's no way that this can go down any further than the length of that PVC. So that's a, a positive way you can do that. So it's basically a piece of PVC that has a pie-shaped piece cut out of it. I'll look up the size on this PVC for you and put it on the, on the video's description there. So that's one thing to do. The other thing to keep in mind is that this crank can turn backwards with the vibration, with the weight of the wheel assembly. It can gently spin backwards and slowly lower your wheel to the ground. Now, I had some people tell me that it would do that, and I didn't believe them. But then when it almost did it to me, I realized they were right. So again, if you have this handle, this gives you a nice place that it's easy to tie off to. And this is a bicycle toe strap. Go to a better bicycle shop, you can get one of those. It's better than a bungee cord in some ways for tying this down. So you can see this is now limited. Now, as far as this, as far as this threaded handle, the handle you see here, you're going, golly, that doesn't look like the stock one. Well, it's not. This is the stock one, and the stock one is very much subject to stripping, to breaking, and to bending. So you've got to be careful with this. Again, be sure that you're using uh, the anti-seize on there to make those threads work smoothly. You may want to have a spare for this, and these handles were ones made by Jim out of Arizona, and Jim has, uh, has passed away, and so those are not available anymore. So you can either fabricate something up yourself with a heavy-duty handle with grade 8 threads, um, or using uh, an Allen head and I'll give you the thread pitch on this so listen carefully this is a 12 millimeter bolt with a 1.75 thread pitch and is 80 millimeters long so that's what you'll need to have if you want to have a spare so remember if this thing breaks off in there then wherever that jack is is you're where you're stuck so you can probably grab it with some vice grips and loosen it up, but you might want to carry a spare. You can probably pick up this bolt at a better hardware store, get the Allen wrench to go with it, 
Uh, this particular one, the head size, is it takes a 10 millimeter Allen wrench for a 12 millimeter bolt. So again, 12 millimeter, 1.75 thread pitch, approximately a minimum of 80 millimeters long, and about half of it being thread, and you should be good to go. So now as far as drilling this for a pin, some people have put a pin through here through the chassis. I think that is an option, and if you want to go that route, uh, you know, I think if you go this route of putting the handle so it can't turn and affixing this so it can't slide down, then you really don't need to do a pin also. If you want to do a pin, that's fine. I just hate to drill holes in a stressed member of the chassis, and this is a stressed area through here, so it's not the highest stress perhaps. But I hate to drill holes where a crack could be introduced eventually by flexing. So just some ideas for you. Thanks a lot.